hi and welcome back to my channel for today's video I'm gonna show you how I, I created this jewelry organizer using an old canvas that I purchased at Goodwill for about two dollars so the first thing that I did was attempt to take off the staples off the canvas and the frame but that didn't work out too well so then I opted to cut the canvas this was actually probably the hardest part for me because the nails or the staples were a bit rusted and um, the canvas was a bit stubborn. So here you can see me giving up. <laughs> so I um, took my little blade and I punctured the canvas and just really um, ran the blade along the frame there and it made it a lot easier for me once I took this off because I found that um, I could just rip off the canvas with the nail. So when I did this there was a bunch of dirt that was underneath the canvas between the canvas and the wooden frame and uh, it just all came out onto my table when I cut this open. So make sure that you have a good um, area where that you don't mind getting dirty because you can never, um, you never know what you'll find underneath these old things. So when you're cutting the canvas or using a blade, please be very careful not to cut yourself. This is quite dangerous. And also please be careful with these rotted nails. If you come across an old canvas with rotted nails, you don't want to cut yourself or poke yourself with them because um, you may need a tetanus shot after that. Well, I'm not a doctor, but I'm just assuming. So here we go, um, taking off, ripping off the canvas. And this is a part, again, that was very difficult. So I ended up taking um, slicing the canvas with the blade and also going in with my um, tool. I don't know if they're pliers or um, metal tweezers. I don't know what they're called, but they're just, it's a tool that I use to cut um, wire, wire cutters. There we go. Um, and I just went ahead and removed all the staples one by one and I was very careful not to cut myself not to pinch myself or stab myself with these rotted uh, nails and I made sure to do this all along the frame you can see me struggling again this was the hardest part for me because um, those nails were really stuck in there now this part is optional um, you can just rip off the canvas if you decide to do something like this. You can just rip the canvas off and leave the nails on there. I've done that in the past as well. I just prefer to remove the nails or the staples. Sorry, I keep referring to the staples as nails. I um, opted to remove the staples because I just don't like the way it looks with the staples on the side when um, I paint it. Yeah, I got tired of standing and hun being hunched over trying to remove this, so I'm sitting down and taking my time. So once I am done removing all the staples from all around the frame, I just want to make sure that I am careful and um, when handling this that I don't get any splinters onto my hand. And um, I also just kind of just look around it and brush off any excess canvas or any residue that could get caught on to the frame. Um, I just want to make sure that when I paint it, it's nice and smooth. So once I am done removing all the staples from the, the frame of the canvas, I need to clean the table and remove all the staples and the canvas and the blades and the um, wire cutters and everything on there and again I'm very careful not to poke myself or hurt myself and um, I 
I know I'm repeating myself a lot, but it's just important that I don't get hurt with this because who knows what kind of dirty stuff is growing on that old material. And yes, I'm a bit of a germaphobe. I can't help it. Okay, moving on. So once it's all done, I'm ready to paint and I'm using the home decor chalk paint. If you're gonna do this uh, craft, you can use any chalk paint that you desire. I chose this one in the color patina, which is like a light blue turquoise color almost. Um, and I pour some paint into a little mixing bowl and I do add a little bit of water because I find that when I water it down, it's easier for me to paint on things and my paintbrush glides. It also stretches the paint a little bit and also gives it that little um, rustic look that I'm kind of going for. So when it paints over the wood, it's not, um, it, it's a little see-through. And it, I, I love that chalk uh, matte finish. So again, that's what I'm going for. And all I'm doing is strictly just being generous with the paint and brushing or painting the, the paint on the canvas, up, ugh, not the canvas, the frame painting the frame and just covering all the holes that the staples um, were on and I just keep going and once I do one coat um, and it's mostly dry I just go in and, and do a final um, brush over and once it's dried then I'm ready to move on to add twine so this twine I purchased at the Dollar Tree I believe Walmart has it as well um, and all I'm doing is taking my staple gun and I'm stapling the twine um, in zigzags up and down. So the very first staple or piece of um, twine that I staple on there, I make sure I zigzag the end and then when I'm ready to start moving on, then I start zigzagging the rest of the uh, twine onto the canvas. And all I'm doing is just going back and forth, back and forth. It's a little tedious, but I mean, you get the gist. Another thing, um, I did put a large blanket underneath the uh, frame between the table and the frame, just because when I staple this, it's really loud and I put that on there just to muffle and so that it wouldn't bang on the table as much. And then once I'm done with the zigzag up and down and it's to my liking, then I'm actually going to do it the opposite direction now. So now taking my twine, I am going to staple it one more time there as you can see, and then drag it all the way up. And when I do this, this is just to make sure that um, I have enough placement on my jewelry. Now, if I had it um, one way only, I would just probably leave it like that zigzag, but because I want to be able to stop the jewelry from traveling or because I want to have options in how I lay my jewelry organizer, I'm doing this um, method as well. And again, the zigzag back and forth, back and forth. So the frame was about two bucks. The twine itself was about a dollar at the Dollar Tree. I may need more than one, so maybe about two dollars. And the paint can really be purchased anywhere. Um, I wanna say it was about three dollars, if I'm not mistaken, but it's paint I already had. So um, I know that the dollar store has paint and um, Walmart has paint for about a dollar as well. So I would say all in all, this cost me maybe about $5 at most. So two, four, yeah, about $5 at most because a lot of the supplies I already had. So you can see there, um, I when I finished one piece of twine, um, I went ahead and stapled a zigzag and then I just continue with um, going back and forth the zigzag motion again.
And once I'm done with that, I just cut off the excess pieces. And then I do use these pieces as parts of, um, well, that will allow me to hang. So what I'm gonna do is staple a piece on one side zigzag. So I staple first um, the piece of string facing inward. And I wanna make sure that I have it in the direction that I'd like. So I staple the piece of string there. You can see um, I'm fumbling a little bit there. Piece of string inward. And then I staple another piece and then I flip it over like a zigzag. And then I staple another piece down and then I flip it back over, zigzag. There you go, and that's one handle. And then because I want options, I do the other side as well. So now with this part here, um, I am using thumbtacks from the Dollar Tree and I am placing them on the area that I'd like. Okay, so I lied, it wasn't $5, um, $6. So I would say under $7, so it's not, still not bad. But anyway, um, I'm aligning the thumbtacks according to the area that I like, measuring, and I am simply pushing them into the piece of wood there. And I'm using my strength, which is not much, um, and I push the thumbtacks in. They're not perfect, but that's okay. For $7, I don't care. I don't care if it's perfect. So um, again, pushing the thumbtacks in. I could be fancy and buy hooks, but this is just what I had here and it makes it so much easier. So this is the final look. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and share. Um, if you'd like to see more videos like this, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and you have a good one. Please subscribe for more DIYs.